What's the word, y'all? It feels so good to say those words, man. I've been on the road if you don't follow me on Twitter and stuff. Um, we did a live show in San Francisco. We did a live show in L.A. with Jamal Crawford. It was a blast. But I brought all my equipment because I'm like, the NBA season is, is starting. I got to get out there and make the content. And then I kept running into technical difficulties. The mic was trash. The Wi-Fi at the hotel had it so that it would take 19 out. Just know I'm here and I'm ready to talk hoops. So every team has played at least one game and I want to give y'all my first impressions of all 30 teams. Before we do that, let me tell you about our sponsor, Prize Picks. Hit the link in the description, download the Prize Picks app and use code Kenny because they're matching all deposits up to $100. I love Prize Picks because it's just you versus the numbers. Pick between two to five different players. You look for something like points, rebounds, assists. You look at the number and you tell them if you think it's going to go more or less than the number. I put together an entry last night because I'm playing every single day and it was so very close for being five for five but the good thing about a five is that it's always a flex play so since monte morris didn't hit his number i still walk out in the green again i'm playing every single day and i know a lot of people out there are too so hit the link in the description download the prize picks app and use code kenny so they can match your deposit up to a hundred dollars hey bear with me y'all because we are talking about the first impression some teams have only played one game and i'm reminding you i was on a west coast road trip we flew into san francisco and drove all the way up to los angeles we were in this big old sprinter which was dope but the Wi-Fi is trash. So there are some teams that I've watched a couple minutes of, and some teams I've watched complete games. It's a long season. There will be a lot of coverage throughout it. Just, just bear with me. With the Atlanta Hawks, the first thing that stood out to me was the fact that John Collins looks good. And I was going to say he looks different, but he has had seasons where he averaged eight, a 20 piece. So it's not like it's too crazy, but it feels like John Collins' name is always on the trade block. And right now he looks really, really good. So it's like, why, why do we even need to trade him? The playmaker between Trey and DeJounte has been added as world. Both of them are killing the, the playmaking game and the team just has a different vibe a lot of the times last season when i watched them they were going to fourth quarters with their back against the wall and they collapse 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 and the first two games haven't been necessarily pretty for them but they've been able to pull them out because they have just like this different feel and i would say they're they're embarking on a different identity the boston celtics are still so damn good like it's, it's just that simple ladies and gentlemen. malcolm brogdon has come in immediately put his his stamp on the team he told the world why he picked boston and why he really liked there and he's showcasing why boston's really like that jason tatum has been really good through these two games i maybe it's a little bit overblown that that um robert williams might miss x amount of months of the nba season because the defense looks really really good I don't know what the Hornets are going to do. I said this in the offseason where I feel like they should be tanking, tanking, tanking because this is the year that you want to tank. But then I watched them in, in the, the small amount of minutes. I've watched them so far this season because of Melo not playing. I'm being honest with you. I'm not going out of my way to watch the Charlotte Hornets. But what I have watched is that, man, when Gordon Hayward is healthy, he looks damn good. And I'm thinking about them as a team and thinking about Gordon Hayward. Like, if he can stay healthy for half the season, you, you can get a little something for him. You know what I'm saying? There's, there are going to be teams out there that if Gordon can showcase that he can be healthy, they're going to be calling for him. Same thing with Terry Rozier. Um, but you do got like the downsides like James Book Knight doesn't even really look like an NBA player. I, I mean, I know he's got some other stuff that he's dealing with, but boy, his minutes have been hard to watch. It was hard to watch in preseason. I gave him the benefit of the doubt, but it's been a game um, that I've seen and it was just really, really rough. The Bulls. Hey, listen, we're one one on the season, which is exactly what I expected. I expected us to lose the first game of the year against Miami because they're the Heat and I expected us to beat the Washington Wizards. It was a flip, flip way. And that's pretty good considering Zach Levine hasn't played. He's playing tonight, which is dope. I will be in attendance. Be looking out for me. Um, and, and it's cool that we're one and one and not 0 and 2 to start the season with missing an all-star caliber player. DeMar still looks great, which is amazing. And Vucevic through the first two games has been pretty good as well. And it's the contract year for Vuce. So you expect him to increase his play because we got to figure out how much you worth, big fella. And a lot of Bulls fandom um, is revolving, conversations are revolving around Patrick Williams because, you know, number four overall pick a little while ago and through the first two games, it has been as bad as the numbers say. If you look at the stat line, the viewing experience is even worse than what the stat line is saying. And boy, oh boy, do I want to give him the benefit of the doubt. Now, I was a, I was one of those guys that memed, oh, the next Kawhi. I didn't really think bro was the next Kawhi. So my expectations are not that, but I just want him to be a contributing basketball player. And as of right now, he's not that. And even on the broadcast with Stacey King and Adam Amin, they're pointing out the fact that Patrick Williams just sits. We're for, the, for a guy that's as athletic as he is, he don't be cutting. He don't be doing the little things. And I thought that that was one of the things we were going to get from Pat. Good defense and the little things. And he's not doing those things. So 
um luckily we got other players in the roster that could pick up the slack but like a lot of our future and a lot of our now is depending on patrick williams taking a step and and basically between the last time we saw him last season and these first two games nothing has changed if anything there has been a slight regression and it's not great and, and i talked to pat recently and one thing i forgot about him in his draft class is that they didn't really have time they didn't have a summer league they didn't really have much of a training camp they got drafted and the season started basically like that but like that can't even really be an excuse when like there's other people within his draft class that has really taken off so i got love for pat i'm not giving up on pat but it is it has been rough cavaliers i completely missed their first game so i really don't have anything to say and i see darius garland's not playing tonight which is unfortunate because i really like darius garland's game and i really love would have loved to watch him play again i think last season i went to two Cavs games um and then this year i'm starting off the season by going to a Cavs game either way um, I did see that Evan Mobley attempted his first two shots with three-point attempts, and I'm excited about that. And his ball handling looked pretty good, looked pretty fluid compared to your number one. Now, again, I haven't watched the full game. The Nuggets scared me in that first game of the season. I will be honest with you. And you know what? And, and even the second game against the Warriors, which is a win, I, did we jump the gun just slightly? And I say we when I'm, I'm talking about myself. I think I put them as the number one seed because I'm just, man, Jamal is back and Michael Porter Jr. is back. I didn't really think about the idea of uh, Jamal Murray sitting out games because he needs to manage his injuries or – you know, just being on minutes restrictions and stuff like that. They still like a good team. Game two, not, not so much a game one. Either way, um, I'm excited to continue to watch the, the Denver Nuggets. Oh, one thing that's in my notes is, um, can we stop just letting Michael Porter Jr. be strictly spot up? I know he don't move as fluid as other people in the league, especially with 17 back surgeries. But he's a max player that's job is to sit in the corner. I mean, he's damn good at it. Don't, don't get me wrong. He's efficient as pretty much anybody on the catch and shoot. But it's like he should be doing a little bit more on the offense. And I'm sure they're going to incorporate that eventually. Eventually, For the Pistons, I want to showcase a particular moment in this game. Um, and remember, Kay Cunningham, who we will be talking about, is in year two of his NBA career as a former first overall pick who looked really good at the second half of last season. So I'm not jumping the gun or anything, but I do want to showcase just one little thing real quick. It, it just, it, there's something missing in it. Now, again, he's a year number two player, but like in college, he was a not, basically a knockdown shooter. And it's just so flat with his jump shot. Now, I'm not overreacting. I'm not saying he'll never be a good shooter because I'm sure he will. But it's something missing about his jump shot that, I, that you know, is worth talking about. And that's not just me talking. I actually saw Pistons fans talking about it on the timeline. That's what made me go go back. Because I'm would. i be honest. I wasn't watching Knicks Detroit, especially after the Knicks pulled out very early on. I was like, you know what? I, I'll switch up on that one. But Jalen Duran is only 18 years old. And Jaden Ivey's speed is translated so crazily to the NBA. I'm excited about their core. In game number two of the season, Ben Simmons looked at the basketball. Now, in game number one I could not say the same I think he had six points or something like that four points six points whatever and all of his field goal attempts were like lobs you know what I'm saying somebody getting it up to him and I'm like man will he ever look at the basket and in game number two he looked at the basket for exactly one quarter for exactly one quarter I'm like Ben bro come on what is going on? again he ain't played basketball in this many months and I understand these type of things but I'm not asking him to be LeBron I'm not asking him to be Giannis at least look like look like an offensive threat. There was even a moment where he passed up a dunk, um, similar to what he did to Trey Young, but he gave it up to Nicholas Claxton, who was amazing yesterday. Um, so nobody cared because they actually scored. But like he was at the rim and he was in the air, and instead of going up and just finishing the layup, he, he dished it off. And I mean, I, I guess that's his play style. But like you would want him to have that type of aggression eventually, because the dumb down won't always be there. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes the dumb down is to Matisse Thybul, who gonna get fouled and he gonna miss half of his free throws. Either way, they won a very close game, probably my favorite game of last night. And that's saying something because it was overtimes. It was a lot of stuff between them and the Toronto Raptors. And you saw they're like, hey, KD and Kyrie kind of nice. You know what I'm saying? Eventually, you know, eventually they're going to get it going. And they were kind of nice. And that was after KD struggling um, in a lot of it. Nicholas Claxton was huge because in game number one, they got dominated in the, in the post or in the paint um, between Zion and Valanciunas. And in game number two, Nicholas Claxton came out and rebounded the hell out of the ball, especially on the offensive side. And it really helped them win that game. I don't know what to make of the Heat. I, I've said on this show when we were talking about the NBA standing predictions that I didn't love their roster. And through two games, they've lost to... Um, one of them against a really good team. So, you know what I'm saying? You're going to win those. You're going to lose those. The first one against the Chicago Bulls, who are missing Zach Levine. I still don't really know what to make of it. Um, Tyler Hero coming out as a starter has looked really, really good. Talk about the Kings real quick. Here's my notes. The Kings gave up 56 points in the paint. F 56. That was against the Portland Trail Blazers. Who, who, they ain't got no Giannis. <laughs> they ain't got no Zion. They went against the Portland Trail Blazers and gave up 56 points in the paint, which is not great. But through the first three and a half quarters, I was like, oh, snap, look at the keys. De'Aaron Fox was locked in in the second quarter. They had a lineup that was like four little guards. 
and Sabonis in the second quarter. And that team offensively looked amazing. And they didn't go back to it down the stretch. And then we got to the fourth quarter. And De'Aaron clanked a couple shots at the side of the backboard. DeMontis Sabonis traveled. They're, they're, it's there, y'all. I'm telling y'all, it's there. They got to they gotta get more physical and don't get beat up down low. And Keegan Murray got to come back. That, that's, how, that's how I feel. I, I'm still pretty, pretty high on this team. Um, even after their kind of collapse, if you want to call it that. Now, I was at the Clippers' first game of the season, um, and it was magical, man. It was magical to see John Wall back on the court. And listen, John Wall had the ultimate green light in his head. You know, in the offseason, he was like, I'm here to be uh, third fiddle or whatever. He, you could tell him that in game number one because when those first two shots went down, he was like, oh, I'm still John Wall. And he was getting downhill. He don't have the explosiveness as like the prime version of him. But that mid-range jump shot was really falling. And uh, they got they got so many pieces that like Terrence Mann didn't even really play. Or Amir Coffey didn't play at all. They just have so many competent, solid guys. And I think that's the perfect way you build around Kawhi because he will, like tonight, not play. And then now we got, we're going to see a Terrence Mann appearance or whatever, whatever. So I really like what they got going on, man. Zubak was amazing and he dominated the paint against the Lakers with the Lakers I've been to both of their first games I was there in the ring ceremony with the Warriors that was a complete blowout and I was there because the Clippers where they played slightly better um better enough for like it wasn't a blowout on national TV you know what I'm saying and man and game number two made me feel a little bit more optimistic than game number one and that's saying something but they they maintained their position in the game through solid solid defense I know I know I know uh, that 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 Russell Westbrook shot 0 for 11 from the field but defensively he was doing his thing. There was like back-to-back -back possessors where they were trying to get Kawhi the ball in the post. And Russell was like, nah, I'm not having it. He literally said, no, I'm not having it after a timeout was called. Like he was doing his thing defensively, obviously. 0 for 11 is never good, no matter the caliber of player. Um, but th there's just not shooting. LeBron said it. Everybody that watched these games saying that like we got to the fourth quarter and they had already missed 103 point shots. They had stopped taking them. And I don't, I don't blame them. You know, they missed so many. But it was like driving kick to nothing, driving kick to nothing, driving kick to nothing. Yeah, they talking about we going to maybe make some trades around Thanksgiving, bro. Y'all might be in a big hole by Thanksgiving, you know, but the but I'm going to say this about another team. They've gone against two of the best teams, two teams that people are assuming are going to make title runs in the Clippers and the Warriors. So let's see what they look like against a mid tier team. And we'll talk. But like. Not having shooting around LeBron is ultimately an L. The Mavericks gave a big game against the Phoenix Suns, but one thing we can't take away is that Christian Wood as a pickup looked pretty, pretty good. And that was one of those games that I wasn't able to watch in real time. Memphis' scouting department, I tweeted about it, is some of the best in the league. They'll find somebody in year number one, he'll just sit on the back of the bench, and their development department gets him to some decent, like Salty Aldama in that first game against the New York Knicks where he could not miss and he was playing good defense. And then in game number two, Jake LaRavia came off the bench, and I think it was David Roddy came off the bench and gave them very quality minutes. But deeper than that, John Morant is just a different kind of monster. It's all we really need to say. You watched it. You saw the stat line. He is a beast. The Bucs managed to beat um, a really good 76er team without Chris Middleton and with Drew Holiday having a bad offensive game in a game that was like 90 total points. Um, that's one of the reasons why I like them. They're resilient and they're good. I like, well, what, what, do you, what do you want me to say about my first impression about a team that I was already saying that was going to win the championship? You know what I'm saying? All right, Spurs fans, be honest with you. Have not watched. Have not watched. I have not watched. I have not watched. I've been checking the box scores. But I haven't watched you. The Pelicans have so many different options that Zion hasn't given us a great performance just yet. And it hasn't even mattered. It hasn't even mattered. You know what I'm saying? Big Val coming and give was it 30 and 17. Brandon Ingram's going to get you a dub. CJ's going to get you a dub. And they got Trey Murphy off the bench. And yesterday, I was expecting more Jose Alvarado than what we got. But they have depth on this roster that when Zion um, is actually, you know, shooting more efficiently. Like, he hasn't had a bad game, don't get me wrong. He hasn't shot efficiently. Whatever. Once he decides to really put it together together, this team is going to be really, really scary. The one thing I'm a little bit afraid of about this team defensively is once they go against a team that moves that ball. Because so far, they haven't done that. They haven't gone against a team that is really ball movement heavy until we got to, like, the second half of yesterday's game and it starts to swing around. And I was like, oh, that defense get kind of cracking a little bit in due time. We'll see. Jalen Brunson was earned every single penny. The fact he has zero turnovers. They had this graphic. Oh, my God. Let me find this graphic. These are all the starting point guards in recent Knicks history. Are you kidding me? I knew it was bad. But this bad is crazy. And now Jalen Brunson comes in and he is, he is undoubtedly the best point guard that they've had starting point guard they had in over a decade Palo's first game was insane um and you know who also had a very good first game that was uh, Jalen Suggs and in game number two against the Atlanta Hawks Trey Young was struggling 
And I'm giving a lot of credit to Jalen Suggs' defense on that. Then Jalen Suggs goes out with an ankle injury, which is unfortunate. I think it's just a sprain, so he'll be back. And then immediately, Trey Young turned it up right after Jalen Suggs. Like, it's not a coincidence, you know? Benedict Matherin, or is it Mathurin? I still don't know. Um, told the world after he was drafted that LeBron got to show me he the best in the league. His mindset is carried over tremendously. This man is so, so fearless getting to the basket that he's him and, and Tyrese are making Pacers games super fun. I'll be honest, like yesterday was a blowout until we got to that fourth quarter. And I, they almost put up 50 points in the fourth quarter. I hate that already that Jalen Smith kind of is losing his spot, you know? Like um, he, he started the game, struggled, and then in the second half, I think they went to Goga. And then once Jalen, once Jalen Smith got off the bench, he immediately got hit, and now he was out for the rest of the game. But like, I hate that he has such small of a leash in that starting spot that was like a game in a couple minutes. Either way, um, Benedict is enough to turn on the Indiana Pacers. It was so very good to see a real good Damian Lillard game. In the offseason, I was part of it. I was like, I don't know what to think about the team. I really like the starting five, but I was questioning about the rest of the, the lineup when we get to the bench. And through the first two games, it hasn't hasn't mattered too much. I mean, I mean, they got a real Damian Lillard game. 28 points going into halftime was absolutely insane. And game number one, I love that they went small ball. It was only for a couple minutes. It was half of a quarter. Justice Winslow at the five. He was guarding some bonus. He was doing a damn good job. I, I need to see them play against some more people before I get a real opinion. But Anthony Simons is absolute stud. We knew that based off last season. Him hitting that game when it was dope. Um, but Dame is back, and I love to hear that. The Rockets have so many young pieces. We, I am guaranteeing that that Jalen Green is a stud. He already is a stud. He's going to be more of a stud. But it's trying to figure out the rest. Who else out of this young core do we believe in? I love that Jabari Smith Jr. in this first game was like, I'm going to shoot every shot I saw in the second game the shots weren't falling he decided to steer back I want him to stay aggressive even if he's shooting inefficiently because we spit this pick on you we want you to get your reps out and I see a lot of Rockets fans like man nobody talks about Jalen Green nobody talks about this I think that's completely okay because once is once it comes down to it once Jalen Green continues to showcase this talent and this talent it's gonna be impossible to ignore so let him continue to do his thing in the shadows people will notice y'all People will, I promise you. The 76ers are 0-2. Now, they were my team to come out or to win the most games in the Eastern Conference. Not the greatest start. In their defense, they played against two top teams also. But you have to beat the top teams to beat the top teams. Now, um, I don't like the way, I, way I've seen the body language and the productivity from Joel and B through the first two games. And him going up and not talking to the media after, media after game number two is kind of crazy. It's the second game of the season, bro. He seems out of shape. Good thing is that James Harden looks great. So if we could get them on the same page where, you know, Joel is back in shape and James still looking solid, everything is going to be smooth. I like that the Suns are incorporating DeAndre Aiden more. That's pretty much all I got for them so far through the first two games of the season. DeAndre Aiden is getting more touches than he did last year, and that's great for not only my fantasy team, <laughs> but for him and I think for the overall team because he is so very good once he's five feet away from the rim. Those bunny Boom, boom, boom. Still easy bucket, bucket, bucket. He did miss the free throw down the stretch yesterday, but still, I love that he's being incorporated more. If I'm not mistaken, the Thunder have only played one game against the Timberwolves, and they play again tonight. I have not been able to watch, so my apologies, Thunder fans. I really don't have an opinion right now. The Wolves are 1-1, one one, which is terrible, considering what their competition was for the first six or seven games of the season. I mean, I guess the Jazz are better than we expected, but still, they, they have way more talent than that Jazz roster, and it went into overtime. And they completely went away from what was working down the stretch. It was a lot of Anthony Edwards. And Carl Anthony Towns, I, I love him. He's, he's, he's a great person and a great player. But I get these moments where he's extremely frustrating to watch. We're like, in this game, they went away from, from Ant. It was like, okay, Carl Anthony Towns is a top-tier player in this league, too. So I understand going to Cat. But, like, after a couple misses of him forcing it and after a couple turnovers, you're like, can we do the other thing? Maybe go back to D'Angelo Russell since he's a clutchest man over the last two seasons of basketball. Go back to Anthony Hours because that's what was working. Um, you know, they still have a lot to figure out as a team that added a new piece. So it will come together, but that last loss wasn't very good. Pascal Siakam is, is good, man. I mean, what, what more can I say? He said he wanted to be top five, and I love the idea of having a higher-up goal. He probably won't end up top five, but he looked like top five in that game yesterday. Where, like, nobody could guard him. And, and for a year or so, when they were down in Tampa, one of the running jokes on Pascal Siakam was like, oh, if he ain't spinning, he ain't scoring. And that's that's not the case. His bag is so very deep. You know what I'm saying? We're talking Euro steps. We're talking step backs. We're talking mid-range. We're talking three-point shots, at least last night. He, the, the, the spin move is still effective. Don't get me wrong. He just has so much in his bag. Um, and and they, were, they were lacking bench production the other night. The Jazz are too good. 
They're too good for their own good. Now, they have 12 picks or 15 picks for the future, but this is the year where, where your pick matters the most. I mean, I, I got to pick up the phone and try to figure out who to get Mike Conley to. I got to pick up the phone and get Jordan Clarkson out of here because they win in too many games. And I love that Laurie Markin is getting as many touches as he wants, but they got to chill. They got to chill. And this is probably a hot start, and eventually they're going to take a losing streak. But, man... They've looked damn good through the first two games. The Warriors are the defending champions, and I still believe that they have championship pedigree. They're, they're still going to be a team competing for a championship. Um, and I don't really have much to say, similar to, similarly to what I said with the Bucks. This is a team that I expect to be good. And first two, two games, they, they, they've they been good. And I know they're one and one, but they've been good enough for me not to be like, oh, let's panic or, oh, let's overreact. They got, they, right, they got it. And the Wizards, I, I enjoyed watching yesterday's game against the Wizards. Not, not because we lost, but because that Wizards throwback jersey is so damn beautiful. And I must say, they were surprisingly good through the first two games of the season. Kyle Kuzma has been lights out. He killed us last night. And bearded um, Chris Stops is, is handling the ball, doing great things. And, of course, Bradley Beal uh, had another good game against the Bulls. So, I, I'm happy about the jerseys. And that's the team that's going to be in the running for sure. I think that's all 30. I swear I might have skipped over some. My apologies. This is already going too long. Leave a like. Uh, more recaps as we continue the season. Thank you so much for watching.